Hello, my dear friend. Welcome one more time to our studies, Gospel Parallels from Odessa, Texas. This is our episode 101 on October 16, 2024. What a privilege. Today we will be talking about true family. Last week we studied it, the danger of emptiness in our previous episode. Actually, the two weeks ago, episode 99. Episode 100, as you know, was a little different program that we presented to recognize the greatness of our Lord through our team members. Okay, well, today we're going to talk about True Family. The reading comes from the easy to read version. We are reading today from the four Gospels. Can you believe it? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's exciting. So here we go. And we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this study. Amen. Okay, Jeho, put the scriptures on the screen. Thank you. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. While Jesus was talking to the people, his mother and brothers stood outside. They wanted to talk to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are waiting for you outside. They want to talk to you, Jesus answered. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his followers and said, See, these people are my mother and my brothers. Yes, anyone who does what my Father in heaven wants is my true brother and sister and mother. Okay, so now let's read what Mark says. Here we go. Then Jesus' mother and brothers came. They stood outside and sent someone in to tell him to come out. Many people were sitting around Jesus. They said to him, Your mother, your brothers, and your sisters are waiting for you outside. Jesus asked, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he looked at the people sitting around him and said, these people are my brother and my brothers, my mother and my brothers. My true brother and sister and mother are those who do what God wants. <laughs> now we're going to read Luke and John. Ready? Let's go. Jesus' mother and brothers came to visit him. But they could not get close to him because there were so many people. Someone said to Jesus, your mother and your brothers are standing outside. They want to see you. Jesus answered them. My mother and my brothers are those who listen to God's teaching and obey it. John 15.4 You are my friends if you do what I tell you to do. This is awesome. It's a beautiful story. What is the context? Well, the Lord Jesus has been teaching important principles in the kingdom of God. Tons of people were listening to him. This is where everything begins. He has been teaching and teaching and teaching, but today you will learn who are the true family of God. All right. So let me tell you this. When someone becomes so important for others, that person is really busy. Think about a dentist, for example. Okay, let's make it more simple. Someone that fixes computers or phones in these days. Someone like that, that is pretty busy, a mechanic, somebody that fixes refrigerators, for, for just to mention one example. Imagine someone that is cooking and his business is growing. That person becomes pretty busy. So what do you think is going to happen if you want to talk to them? There is only one thing you can do when you have so many people wanting to talk to you. What is what you do? You work harder and you begin to manage your time in a much better way. You know that productive people are not idle. They are always busy and they have pretty busy schedules. On their schedules, productive people, they will have priorities. Well, the Lord Jesus was just like that. He was teaching. He was healing people. He was pretty busy. 
But imagine if you need to talk to someone, whether it's a dentist or a mechanic, for example, or somebody to fix something in your home, what would you do if this person is pretty busy? Would you be upset because they cannot see you because they are too busy? Well, of course you're going to be, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, but that at the end, you know, you are going to make a decision. Is either you're going to wait for your turn or you will look for somebody else to take care of you. That happens all the time, right? You have a situation in your home. You, you need somebody to fix something in your home or in your health. Any, in any field. And you just can't get an appointment with that specialist, with this person that can fix the problem. Imagine you have an issue with plumbing. Well, what are you going to do? You have to wait until the specialist is available, which happens sometimes, or you are going to look for someone. But what if what you are looking for is not just a specialist, it's a relative, someone that you love, like in the case of the Lord Jesus, it was his mom and siblings looking for him. That changes things, right? Still, let me ask you this. Do you think that they were trying to help the Lord Jesus in anything that he was doing? Is that the reason why Mary and the other children, siblings with the Lord Jesus, they were there to try to help the Lord? We don't think that is the case. So if you happen to have someone that is your relative, for example, or a close friend, and this person suddenly is extremely popular, it's a person that everybody wants to talk with him, and you just can't reach, reach him quickly, you know, this person is pretty busy, what are you going to do? Remember this. Are, are you wanting to help this person? Or you just want something from that person. That is something that you need to consider. So imagine if you are looking for someone, a relative of yours, or a specialist. Before the day that you go that day searching for him, tell me, when was the last time that you visited this relative of yours just to say hello? You know what is very common? is that people don't say hello anymore. Do you remember back in the day, it was pretty popular to pay visits to family and friends. Today, people say that it's disrespectful when they come unannounced to your home. Well, as far as I remember in my childhood, In my family, we were honored every time somebody came and knocked at the door just to pay a visit, just to say hello, have a cup of coffee with, with us. We were honored. And you know, probably it's a cultural thing, but I live here in Texas. I live in America. I'm an American citizen. And I love technology and I love scheduling appointments and all that. But if somebody comes to my home today, I will do my best to accommodate my time to that visit. Because it's, to me, it's an honor that somebody is taking the time to go all the way to my home. Now, putting this situation in the right angle, Mary and the brothers of the Lord Jesus are coming to see him. What is the urgency? Have you ever thought about it? Why is it that suddenly Mary and the Lord's siblings are there and they send somebody? Hey, tell Jesus that we are here. We need to talk to him. Kind of a demanding, don't you think? <laughs> what, what is the origin situation? I want you to think today about the importance of if you have friends, relatives that you consider important in your relationship to pay a visit to them once in a while. Do you know something, my friend? Everyone is just one phone call away 
Isn't it true? Anybody is just one text message away. Somebody says, well, they don't like text messaging. Well, what about an email? Well, they don't use computers either. Well, what about a piece of mail then? The point is, when you care for somebody, let's suppose you care for a relative, you care for a friend, don't you think it will be a good idea that you initiate some sort of touching basis with them? One of my friends says to me that everybody reaches out to him only when they want something from him. And guess what is what that something is most of the time? <laughs> you guessed it, right? It's money. And then they get upset because they can't reach out my friend. And he says to me, you know, I, I don't think it's fair. All this bunch of friends and all this bunch of my relatives, they never say, say hello to me. I don't remember when was the last time that they invited me to go out, have a cup of coffee. They never asked me about my health or my family. <laughs> so why is it that people in general do not reach out to the rest? Is it possible, my friend, that here Mary and the children, besides the Lord Jesus, of course, all the siblings, it's possible that they were not interested in having a relationship with the Lord? Do you really think that the Lord Jesus was so busy that he didn't want to have a relationship with them? Do you really think that? It's like someone that says to me, well, I, I, I don't want to disturb the Lord with my prayers. <laughs> That's such a silly thing to say. I don't want to disturb the Lord with my prayers. The Lord is way too busy handling the whole universe. That's true. But still, He has time for you, my friend. And for me. And the thing is, those that are reaching out to the Lord, they develop that relationship with the Lord. And remember, your relationship with the Lord God has two ways. You talk, and He speaks. <laughs> so whenever you are praying, you say what you want to say. But at the same time, He's going to talk to you back through the Word, through messages, like this, for example. In this very moment, you are hearing certain things that they could be a direct answer, a direct commandment from God to you, telling you, Reach out to those that you love. By the way, I heard a comedian one day, he said something so funny. He said that uh, maybe we need another health crisis. So that way we can all, again, spend more time with those that we love. <laughs> all right. So let me ask you this. If you have a relative that is pretty successful, is, a, for example, an engineer, is an architect, or he has a business. He's pretty successful. Are you envious of that success? Are you really envious? Or are you happy for the success of that friend? Well, if you are happy, and you know this person is busy, so what is the problem with waiting for your turn? What's the problem with that? Did they say, I cannot see you now, but I can see you in such and such day? You know, here in America right now, especially here in West Texas, we have a situation with the health system. And what is that situation? Well, the situation is that there are so many patients and not too many doctors. <laughs> so whenever we need an appointment, particularly when it's the first time we are going to see a physician, a doctor, we sometimes can wait up to six months for the first appointment. How about that? Well, you say, well, you don't have to wait. There has to be somebody. Well, guess what? Here, we have to wait for a long time. And whenever that appointment comes through, you don't 
fail to that appointment because you are going to have a big problem if you don't go. And I'm not talking about a fee that anyways they will charge you a fee. The problem will be that the next appointment will be again in the same period of time. If you waited three months for an appointment and you miss it, you're going to be waiting another three months. Do you want that? I don't think so. So when you have someone that you really love and care, you want to talk with this person and you want to have time and they say to you, I can't, but until such and such day, what is the problem with waiting if you really love this person? But uh, is it possible, my friend, that Mary and her children were jealous of our Lord Jesus? <laughs> is it possible? Of course it's possible. Now, interestingly, is that the Lord Jesus said, These are my mother and my brothers, referring to the people helping him. Somehow, gives us the indication that Mary somehow was not doing God's will. Somehow, she wasn't. And for a second, I want to talk to you about the influence of a mother or a father when one of the kids is pretty successful and how he the dad or she, the mom, should handle that success. Because, not because one of the kids is successful, the mom is going to take sides and say, yeah, you are not as successful as your brother such and such, so we all are going to be in the same group against your brother, the successful one. That's not right. That's, that is simply not right. We know that there is an instance when, in fact, it was the beginning of the ministry of our Lord Jesus, there was a wedding. And actually Mary said to the Lord, Hey son, what if you take care of this? If you remember, Mary knew from the beginning that the Lord Jesus was somebody special. She knew this child was not like any other child. Remember, he was conceived in the womb of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. There was no intervention of Joseph in that conception. She knew it. Joseph knew it. Somehow, everybody find out. Later, when he was a child, they couldn't find him when he was 12. One day, they went to Jerusalem. And the Lord said to his parents, You know that I need to take care of my father's business. So Mary knew about the uniqueness of her son, Jesus. What is the problem then? To take you to your context, any mom or dad that sees the greatness of one of the kids, what is the problem with saying to the other kids, your brother or your sister is really successful? What's the problem with saying that? Some people say, well, you know, I don't want to make them jealous. Of course, you don't want to make your children jealous of one of your one of your other kids' success. No, you don't want them to be jealous. But not because you are so concerned about their feelings, you are going to even ignore your successful child. There are no more records in the Scripture of Mary, the mother of our Lord, interacting with the disciples other than the wedding until now. Why is that? It's interesting. It's something that you need to think about it. Because the Lord Jesus said, Who is truly my mother and my brothers? Who are they? And then he pointed out to his disciples and he says, Those who do God's will, 
those who obey God's word. Something was happening in that family. We probably one day we will find out in heaven. What we know is that eventually after the Lord Jesus was risen, there were two of his brothers that were committed with others serving the expansion of the kingdom of God. James, Jude, records in the Bible about their writings. They were committed, but it was afterwards. Throughout the ministry of our Lord Jesus, we don't know much about them until now. What we know is something, is that the Lord Jesus was really busy. And he said, those that are working with me, they are my family. So now I want to take you to another scenario, which is your practical life. Okay? Regardless of what's going on with your family, if they contact you or they call you or they come to visit with you or not, you have your own life, right? You have your own place. You are there doing your life, doing your thing. So anyone that comes to help you becomes very important in your life. The person that does this particular task, the person that does this other particular task, they become important for you. What is the problem with that? And that is what the Lord Jesus said. You know, these guys, they are my true family. Why would you abstain yourself from serving our Lord God? What, what could be the reason for you to say, you know what, uh, I like church and I like God and I like to listen, but serving God, like uh, getting involved, uh, that's not for me because la, 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 la. You know what the Lord Jesus said? He said that those that are doing God's will, they are his friends. So you need to become a friend of our Lord Jesus by doing his will. On the other hand, I want to close telling you this important thing. There are people that are doing wonderful things in our communities. You need to learn to encourage them. You need to, to start telling others, you're doing a fantastic job by doing this and this in the school district. You are doing a phenomenal job as a fireman. You are doing a phenomenal job in the health system. You know, it's so good that you are a great driver, etc. We need to learn to encourage one another. As I am encouraging you, encouraging you today to consider serving God, to honor the Lord God, and become a friend of Jesus. Now, if you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus, today is the day, and all that you have to do is just to ask Him to forgive you and say, Lord God, please forgive me. I don't want to be far away from you because of sin. So please, I open my heart, send your Holy Spirit to dwell in me, and make me a new person. In the name of Jesus, receive the forgiveness of your sins, my friend. And remember, we are here broadcasting 24-7 on our website. There are tons of videos to, for you to watch. Here are all these beautiful platforms and video, Facebook and Vimeo, and of course, YouTube, which also is now podcast and audio. You prefer just to listen, Victory Radio is available for you. Of course, all the other platforms for audio and podcast are available. If you go to the website, you will find them there, right? Cool stuff for you. And probably the most amazing things that we have done lately is the development of our, of our video apps on Apple TV, 
on Samsung TV, on Roku TV, and also on Amazon Fire Stick TV. Thank you so much for being here, and I wish you a beautiful rest of your day.